So, hello everyone. Good morning. Thanks for joining for this session. We are having quill audits with us, and we'll be discussing a lot of questions and one use case related to hyperledger. How audits are done and what are they up to, so that we can make some good decision in future. Uh, over to Pradeep. Sure. It's Thanks, Kartikeya. Good morning, uh, yeah. uh, everyone. Introduction will be and sure. So, we'll all right. Um, I'm Pradeep. Uh, I represent Quill Audits. I head the marketing division at Quill Audits. Uh, uh, if uh, if anyone of you have already heard about Quill Audits, uh, you you would know what we do. Uh, Quill, uh, for those who do not know, uh, Quill Audits is basically in the business of uh, securing smart contracts, securing uh, web three projects. And uh, we do it in a very uh, passionate way, in a way that uh, uh, you know our mission uh, speaks for itself. Our mission is uh, we are uh, we are here to make Web three a safer place. Uh, the testament of that is we have done already seven hundred plus projects. The clients uh, are global, uh, are spread across the globe, and uh, they speak highly of us. And uh, we, uh, if you if you look at the world's rankings, uh, we are at number three or number four. So we are a fast growing. Uh, we are making a very positive impact, and uh, we audit smart contract. Uh, you know, for the sole purpose of making the uh, whole Web three, uh, 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 you know, the Web three technology uh, to evolve in a positive direction. So this is about uh, Quill audits. This is about me, um, uh, Sanket. Do you want to uh, share uh, about uh, what you do and? Uh, uh, at Quill Audits. Sure. So, um, I mean, another thing I would like uh, to add to Pradeep's description of Quill Audits is our CEO, Pritam, has said multiple times that the money is in the code. And um, if the money is in the code, but the code is written by developers and developers are humans who make mistakes. So it's important uh, that we do not uh, undersign the flaws in the code, which could lead to potential disasters. In terms of uh, the funds that has uh, that have uh, you know been deposited by users into different protocols, so uh, yeah, that's it. And um, my name is Sanket, and I work on products on different products uh, in Quill Audits. So Quill Quill Audits is a cybersecurity firm, and we do audits primarily, but um, simultaneously we are also developing cybersecurity products to automate cybersecurity, given the fact that audits do tend to be really difficult. Um, but nonetheless, uh, audits will not go anywhere because tools are only suggestive measures. And uh, my role is to understand uh, how we can benefit uh, users and how we can give them options to assess the cybersecurity protocols uh, implemented by different protocols before investing into them. And also understand the vulnerabilities uh, present in smart contracts uh, by developers uh, that have been written by developers. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Sure. Kartike, uh, maybe you can uh, now tell a bit about uh, what Hyperledger Hyderabad does and how have you been, uh, you know, working yeah. in this space? Sure. So, uh, Hyperledger Hyderabad is one of the oldest community. Uh, which we have in India. It's one of the largest community under Hyperledger Foundation. We have close to 1,500 people. And Hyperledger is having different, different chapters all across India. Hyperledger Noida is there, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Bangalore. We rank second up just after Bangalore. And we used to organize all such meetups where developers can understand, take some idea, take some inspiration. So it's always an open source community. And I also contribute to Hyperledger Foundation in different ways. So let's uh, move on to our today's topic. Uh, shall we start with some questions or uh, you want to pick up some? Sure, on that note, uh, um, maybe, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'll have a continuity of you know what uh, you were talking about, and uh, maybe you can answer uh, you know answer the audience about uh, you know that concept. Uh, just wanted to ask in that regard, uh, how does Hyperledger handle authentication and access control? Uh, so Hyperledger have a different uh, ways of handling it. Uh, we have our own set of rules and regulation, which we can write it on uh, configuration file. 
and then organizational level uh, dependencies are there depending on how how you make the nodes there we have authentication things I'll take a pause one minute. Huh? Yeah, uh, Pradeep. Sure, yeah, I'm here. Pradeep, can we take some questions which you can answer for oh, sure yeah go ahead uh, like have you done any uh, audit for uh, hyperledger uh, sanket uh, do you want to answer that question yeah so um, not to my knowledge um, i mean we usually work with solidity and uh, rust based uh, projects on solana and uh, majorly work on projects um with the uh, polygon and binance smart chain so uh, hyperledger is i i believe an enterprise level tech okay my video is off, so sorry just a second yeah so hyperledger being an enterprise level technology and uh, being uh, a niche skill uh, i mean uh, the number of audits that do come are, are very less so um to be honest uh, our exposure to hyperledger is very limited okay so i would also like to understand uh, uh, there is one more thing called hyperledger bisu which does work with uh, it does work with as well with solidity and evm based things you can also upload something on uh, ethereum main network and something so have you worked on have some some kind of audit with hyperledger bisu i mean um, we in general uh, avoid work i mean not as in avoid but uh, we don't have that sort of expertise working with hyperledger fabric and uh, the thing is that uh, as pradeep earlier mentioned i mean i understand that it uses solidity um, but uh, to be honest since we don't have a lot of exposure to the infrastructure uh, and uh, we tend to uh, deal with individual protocols that are currently developing their projects with solidity or rust uh, so we have auditors that have expertise uh, you know uh, that have built uh, certain um, uh, that have built certain protocols uh, you know um, on uh, on these uh, these languages use um, our our auditors are used to uh, you know auditing uh, protocols that are made on these languages and since as i mentioned pradeep also mentioned that um, uh, our service is a testament to the best quality that is out there and since uh, we believe in making web3 safer with the best quality as well um, we avoid uh, you know um, we avoid uh, taking on projects that we can't deliver uh, the best huh. that's okay okay so i i have uh, one more question if if you if you can sure, sure. take that yeah uh, let's say uh, how how convenient it is to use some kind of libraries like open zeppelin like do you mm -hmm. recommend using it or uh... yeah. yeah okay i got your question yeah so um from a security standpoint uh, it's fine because all these libraries are uh, audited right and uh, already have the security implementations in place so uh, what we do in terms of so okay so in our audit process also so firstly we try to get a hang of the code quality while gathering the specifications from the clients so um, our focus is on the complex code that has been written by the developers of the project and uh, i mean using standard libraries like open zeppelin or code from uniswap or pancakes or we usually comment out or uh, you know uh, we consider that as uh, dead code because uh, these are already audited uh, this code is already audited and the cyber security implementations are there and then we try to look for consistent coding style and follow the style guidelines for rust or solidity 
and then we make sure that the contracts can be compiled and tested perform unit tests so uh, this is how we work and um, i mean there is no harm in using open zeppelin uh, standard libraries or uh, you know taking code from uh, different uh, organizations that are open source and whose code has been audited okay thank you and uh, moving forward i'll i'll have one more question so do you use do you do mostly the audit of coding manually or there are certain tools which you do okay. so yeah. so basically um so as i mentioned the first part is to look for the specifications and understand what uh, the the protocol how the protocol wants the contract to behave what is the intended behavior of the contract that it has coded so as i mentioned after testing the code removing the dead code and marking the complexity uh, marking the complex part of the code what we do is we freeze the code and uh, specify the commit hash oh sorry uh, specify commit hash yes and then we do a manual review as you as you guys already know uh, we look for unusual behavior common security vulnerabilities like the scw guidelines and everything so then we do functional testing uh, in which um, you know it is the the contract is deployed in a sandbox environment uh, using hard hat the nash or different tools we also do gas analysis uh, look for uh, you know uh, latest attack vectors say escrow manipulation or access control authentication token supply manipulation things like that and to your point we also use uh, different uh, automated testing tools uh, like uh, mythex mythil you know uh, and then sol graph or solidity courage also we use we also use slither so we have a myriad of tools at our disposal and uh, we try and test all different tools we also have some internal tools um, that we use and uh, part of my work in the coming uh, in the coming months i believe uh, would be to develop such tools to help us identify different uh, attack vectors in code and how the content in functions is wrapped and passed through all that code to find that code and to find uh, i mean as you mentioned code in open zeppelin so uh, part of my work would be to find code that is already present in standard libraries and then separate that from complex code and then analyze the complex code for uh, different attack vectors and possibilities of vulnerabilities and uh, exploits yeah okay so uh, thanks for answering that i yeah. have few more questions Sure, sure, sure. Please. Uh-huh. So, the the other question I I would like from you to get it answered is, uh, so developers always think through like before deploying it to main network, they should test it properly in 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 some local environment or maybe on test network. Yeah. So, it, let's suppose if if I put something uh, fishy on some some vulnerability mistake. and i have put it on main net yeah so now what will you advise i mean um, the advice would be um, i mean obviously if you're getting audited uh, the code audited so um, i mean we would uh, have to redeploy the code by uh, testing it for the vulnerability and um, we'll have to test it in a sandbox environment by uh, as i mentioned freezing the code and specifying the commit hash and then uh, we will audit the code manually for each line and once we do find the vulnerability that could be exploited uh, we will try to fix the code and redeploy yes acha theek hai so there is one question maybe either you or pradeep can answer somebody is asking in chat what kind of skill we need to have uh, a career in web3 securities and future scopes so i think you can also cover some bit of uh private blockchain also here if if sure no so uh, we would love for you to actually uh, give more insight on um, how um, a career in uh, security for private blockchains uh, you know how a case for that could be made because uh, i mean i honestly don't have a lot of exposure to that so what do you think so i would like to uh, add in uh, one point here uh in order to make any career in uh, uh, this thing one of the things that uh, uh, quill audits does is uh, we have uh, we have co- conducted one uh, cohort wherein uh, we train uh, enthusiasts with uh, basics of uh, auditing and uh, you know so so that they can you know start uh, initiating uh, 
you know these practices in their uh, career and uh, you know step into the world of uh, uh, web3 auditing and uh, you know uh, security uh, the, this is something that uh, you know as an uh, 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 as a as a step to uh, support web3 guys i think uh, uh, one of the things that is absolutely important in in an evolution of a project is uh, is auditing itself so any company or any uh anybody who wants to enter into uh, web3 one uh, the, uh, uh, you know or who maybe who is an entrepreneur or so these uh, these founders or entrepreneurs should take into consideration uh, the security and auditing aspects which means that uh, in their technical team they should also have uh, people who are knowledgeable about, about this so to support that and to drive such uh, participation uh, we are doing uh, we have already done the, uh, this cohort and uh, the other cohorts are uh, uh you know uh, are in the pipeline which will be announced later but uh, this is what just wanted to uh you know put this award in because uh, yeah. you know it's it's t- totally worth it yeah so um i think um, to answer the question exactly uh, an auditor is somebody who has uh, good expertise with um, with you know or the development part of things because uh, once you know how to code um probably uh, and you know the my the nitty gritties and the details and the techniques to sort of ensure uh, i mean you know the best practices basically uh, because you've been um, coding uh, so much and so frequently and building different projects so what this does is uh, it gives you a handle on uh, how different codes can be manipulated or what are the flaws that you need to look out for while writing the code so an auditor is basically an experienced developer who has some techniques or a method uh, to identify flaws and vulnerabilities to so say for ex- and i know solidity i mean is not that old a skill uh, wherein you say that you know i have 10 years of expertise hence i will be an auditor but in one or year or six months or maybe 1.5 years if you've been coding thoroughly on solidity then you must know that uh, you know there are certain things that you need to look out for uh while you are coding and stuff and obviously there are cohorts like ours and many other cohorts as well that do offer uh, you know strategies to look out for these flaws and vulnerabilities in uh contracts so to summarize i would say uh, i mean um, learn solidity and whatever comes before it just the basics then practice on solidity for some time develop projects uh showcase your projects at different hackathons and try to get it uh, try to get its flaws uh, exploited by different people and then develop your own techniques and then also join different cohorts or uh, there is a lot of substance available online also a lot of medium blogs we have our own uh, road maps to development and best resources and practices on our portal called web3 suggest as well which indexes all the information about development and how to become developers and how to uh, get into different careers into uh, web3 security and web3 in general and then uh, probably uh, you know just uh, try to get some more experience uh, by uh, taking out bug bounties for different projects uh, so immunify is one such platform that allows you access to different bug bounties by different protocols so once you tend to go through the code for these protocols and try to understand uh, what sort of vulnerabilities can be exploited or exposed that would probably give you more experience and help you to understand uh, you know how you can better your methods so i think i hope that answers the questions for public blockchains and i mean karthik i would love for you to sort of uh, shed some light on uh, how we can do the same for private blockchains if if uh, no. i mean i'm sure yeah. there must be difference yeah yeah so i also as part of my day job i also work for one of the big four where i do some kind of audits mm-hmm. and uh, with my past experience in auditing some of the private blockchain i would say your your knowledge of understanding one architecture is very very important mm-hmm. like how the data flows through how how that entry point is is there and how how well you can understand one architecture okay and read as much as possible about the securities that itself is very very important i'll give you one example uh, in every, every audit is very different basically to me whenever some audit will reach out to me i have to think through the architecture first and 
you can understand every project and every implementation is different in in, in its own architecture so there is no specific thing or thumb rule that we have to follow okay so let's say if the architecture contains private key and public key of the user so you have to think through is, is the public key and private key secured properly is it put into a hashicorp wallet or how it is like made secure so some some general principles you have to derive actually from the architecture itself how the data is actually flowing how everything is like kept in place uh how well it is doc documented documentation plays a very very vital role at least for your team to understand and for others also to understand so documentation plays a very important role that also i believe is one part of uh, auditing when we audit we also used to take care of how well you have documented certain stuff like how are you protecting your password there should not be single admin to one cloud uh, provider or whatever cloud you are using so first is and very very important is read as much as and through all the architectures which are available you can you can google it around what is the architecture of let's say a uh, broader architecture might be available for npci or something okay so broader architecture of some supply chain was must be available the broader architecture of so many nfts are available architecture means just not means the smart contract some other api calls or how it is done so there are several such examples which are already existing uh go through the, those, those architecture and understand because it since it's a private blockchain your architecture is already in, in your control okay so uh when when the architecture itself is in in public blockchain we don't deal much with the architecture because that is not in our control yeah so reading as much as about the architecture that will actually help okay so i can take some questions on uh, i think shane has uh, made a very valid point in terms of uh, security of any project uh, so uh, i mean you know uh, as you were also mentioning that probably the business logic and how uh things work uh, apart from um, you know the code part uh, and the business operations work and the stakeholders involved are also very important and um, i mean more so uh, even in uh, i mean in public blockchains i would say uh, i mean obviously the business logic is important you need to understand how uniswap or probably any other protocol is working but what do you think uh, is its implication in in a, a private blockchain uh, or in a private blockchain uh, segment the the question is for me yeah yeah, yeah I, i i missed the question i thought you are asking this question no no no, no. i will allow stay in or to also to okay okay so um, please if you can allow shane to answer that would be uh, beautiful yeah shane are you are you comfortable yeah uh hi um so yeah i mean uh, we in my firm we actually deal uh, mostly in the private blockchain and can, we can did some auditing uh, i'm sorry sent to interrupt can you give a brief introduction about yourself and then you can take the question oh yeah sure uh, so i'm currently a developer for the safis asia blockchain net for one of the big four so uh, the roles includes in like developing the proof of concept solutions and some auditing uh, mainly for the uh, central banks and enterprises um so yeah so as i was saying um some of these risk especially uh when dealing with a large and complex system such as like the central banks so what we discovered is uh, uh some of the vulnerabilities right it does not come from the codes but mostly of what is not in the codes so for example like because they have their internal controls and they also have their governance that we have to match with our uh like you said infrastructure so in case of for example um is uh, maybe i should give one example for example like uh is multi sig really needed in the pri- private blockchain right i know it is uh multi sig for example in the public chain it will be more secure uh in that way but is arguably uh introducing more risk 
if you are implementing it in the private blockchain. Why? Because now you have two uh, wallets that you have to be secure. And this not only uh, costs more, but it's also uh, uh, introduced more actors that interacting with the blockchains. So I guess mm -hmm. this kind of like perspective uh, on um, whoever thinking about making a career in a private blockchain space that uh, it depends on the industry, right? So if you're dealing with like a renewable energy industry, their requirements is way more different than the central bank or the banks or the financial institutions. So uh, getting the understanding or on the how the operation works, who are the actors that we're dealing, I think this will be like a very, very important in developing a much more secure architecture. Yeah. That is. Sure. I think uh, 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 on this note, I uh, I have to request Sanket because yeah. uh, Sanket has uh, uh, you know uh, has a, uh, a case study to sort of present, which has uh, you know which is absolutely interesting in this context. And uh, Sanket, do you want to uh, share yeah. that piece of information uh, with us, please? I'll, I'll share my screen. All right. All right. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah, so, um, right. So on 2nd of December, am I audible guys? Yes. Okay. On 2nd of December, 2022, um, we had anchor protocol, uh, which was, uh, you know, exploited and, uh, more than 5 million, um, uh, dollars, uh, were lost and uh, not only were they lost, uh, other, uh, you know, other protocols using their services, uh, also, uh, you know, had to bear the brunt of this crash. So, uh, I mean, I'll just briefly explain what Anchor Protocol is. So, Anchor Protocol um, was or based on uh, DLT and uh, was basically an integral part of, uh, I mean, you know, the new web. And this was before Web3 was termed as Web3. There were just cryptocurrencies and blockchain and the different underlying technology. So um, they initially, so we'll just talk about its uh, staking platform. It has a lot of different services, but we'll just talk about the staking protocol uh, since uh, that was the part that was hacked. Um, so Anchor basically what it does is it allows you to stake uh, your cryptocurrencies uh, for different uh, for different blockchains. And in return, it gives you an uh, it gives you its own cryptocurrency called a ETH or a BNB or a matic, um, which basically what you can do is it represents, um, it represents the currency that you had deposited plus the staking rewards for that currency. And, um, you know, um, that is how, um, the pool of users that had staked their currencies are rewarded through the anchor currencies. Uh, so, um, I mean, you know, you can uh, deploy development nodes and build the apps and everything. Uh, but there are a lot of benefits to, uh, you know, uh, becoming stakers on anchor web three platform, which, uh, you know, uh, which result from basically two types of tokens, a anchor, uh, B and anchor C. So you will see two types of tokens moving forward. A, B, and B, B, and A, B, and B, C. So the two types of tokens are basically reward earning and reward bearing tokens. So A, B, and B, B is a reward earning token. Uh, so basically uh, the number of these tokens increases in your wallet and it's pegged one to one to B, and B. So for example, um, if, so for example, one A, B, and B is equal to one B, and B. So then if your reward is two B, and B, and you had deposited uh, 100 BNB. So currently you will have 102 ABNB B. And uh, the other token is ABNB C, which basically is, um, which basically just represents the tokens, the reward, but in terms of the value of the token. So if you had deposited 100 BNB and your reward is 102 BNB, then your ABNB C will still be 100, but the value of each ABNB C will increase. Yeah, so, um, okay, so um, basically, as I mentioned, um, the ABNB B and the ABNB C are, were the two models, 
of tokens in which uh, anchor used to uh, reward its users right so uh, they were actually uh, updating some of the reward policies and schemes in the contracts for um, these two tokens and while updating uh, these contracts they were using the private key uh, but the hacker while the update was going on uh, was able to steal the keys because of the update the private key was not and the private key was not completely secured so the hacker was able to um, you know uh, just steal uh, the private key from the deployer's wallet of the deployer's wallet uh, which allowed them to gain absolute control of uh, what i mean the wallet and allowed uh, them allowed the attacker to uh, mint more tokens to his address so as you can see on the screen uh, the attacker minted 10 trillion tokens to address uh, to his address so these are some of the um, on chain details i'll share this ppt uh, with you guys so that you can see what actually happened and make more sense of uh, the flow of things uh, so these are the address and i mean obviously on different block explorers you can go and check what actually happened um, but if you go to nansen dot portfolio it allows you to see uh, basically that what are the funds in each of these address so if you just go to nansen and you can just paste these contracts right now i think the funds would be depleted but around 2nd december when it happened you would see that um, how the hacker had uh, implemented the contracts and you know minted 10 trillion tokens of abnb uh, to uh, his own wallet this is a short activity that anyone can do yeah so basically uh, this is what i was talking about from uh, an al address uh, the hacker uh, you know had uh, deployed this contract and if you want to see how this implementation contract was created so anchor was so uh, this is the hacker only the deployer because uh, he had the private key so uh, it uses um, basically the hacker used the private key to uh, deploy a b and b c tokens which are the uh, reward earning tokens which means uh, the value of the token increases instead of the number of tokens increasing and he implemented this to mint more tokens so now you can see in this transaction after uh, minting uh, uh, the tokens he had uh, transferred these tokens to his own uh, wallet and for that uh, he had to pay a gas fee and for uh, this gas fee he transferred the 1.125 bnb from deployer's compromise wallet to his own wallet um, so you can see that not even the uh, gas fee uh, the hacker had to spend of his own so in in different uh, attack vulnerabilities or maybe you can see even you know like a honey pot or anything mostly what hackers do is they use their own funds Uh, firstly uh, to get a sense of liquidity and how the pools are working and everything but in this case hacker did not have to spend anything why because i mean uh, he had already got an access of the private key of the deployer's wallet so i mean it's one of the most basic things to keep your private key most secure and we often take it very lightly that you know um, i mean it's the private key and obviously no one would uh, expose it but uh if if such a multi billion um, protocol could do such a simple mistake then probably uh, i mean you know we should implement more cyber security protocols uh, or probably use a cold storage uh, or whatever i mean you know there are a lot of different uh, ways to keep your private key secure even while exposing it while updating your protocol uh, so, but uh, there are a lot of um, things you can do to safeguard your private key while doing such updates and such a protocol should have kept them in mind given the fact that you know uh, more than i mean i think almost 30 billion dollars have been lost in uh, more than 800 hacks in the past 7 or 8 years and in the last year alone i think around 2.5 3 billion dollars have been lost so um, and obviously after uh, minting all these tokens and depleting the pools from pancake swap of uh, bnb um, abnb tokens um, he started uh, you know just um, uh, transferring the amounts uh, to tornado cash uh, after bridging um, the the funds to ethereum and polygon using the seller network and uh, you know 
the multi chain or um, you can see uh, um, the use of seller network uh, to convert the uh, to convert the funds to ethereum to convert usdc uh, binance peg usdc to ethereum and uh, to polygon and then you and then sending those funds uh, to to tornado cash and tornado cash is basically i mean it's a protocol for laundering cash so that so basically you put some funds into tornado cash and uh, it uh, divides uh, the funds into multiple wallets and different things basically it allows you uh, to uh, i mean not exactly launder but transfer cash and make it more difficult for other people to track the flow of funds by distributing these funds into different wallets different accounts different currencies that sort of stuff so you can see immediately after the uh, crash uh, this happened and uh, another interesting i mean another interesting impact of the price dropping was that there is this protocol or uh, maybe another staking platform called helios so um uh, yeah so um there is this another uh, protocol called helios which is a staking platform it uses a delayed i mean it uses an oracle but the information of a b and b c dropping uh, by 100% was um, you know it was it was delayed so the information did not reach to them in time because of which um the uh, one of the hackers uh, uh, hacker was um, basically what they did was uh, they put um, i mean they deposited i think 183000 abnb c and took out a loan of 16 million dollars uh, in hay stable coins so basically using 183000 uh, tokens of abnb c they were able to extract 16 billion uh, 16 million uh, dollars worth of stable coins yeah so as you can see um, on different chains so tornado cash as i mentioned it helps you to uh, convert and send cash uh, sorry send funds uh, into different wallets and you know it's sort of untraceable uh, so um, the hacker used uh, tornado cash to send uh, to convert um, funds uh, to different uh, tokens of different blockchain so if you can see there there is one there is bnb and then there is matic polygon polygon matic and then there is ethereum so three different chains he used uh, th uh, three different tokens on three different chains to send uh, it to tornado cash uh, and basically um, make the funds untraceable uh, for for the authorities so um, as i mentioned uh, um, you know about helios also so um, i mean post that exploit uh, the primary um, the primary motive of anchor has become to uh, alert different organizations or different platforms that have allowed the trading of abnb uh, tokens uh, basically anchor peg tokens uh, to stop trading and uh, obviously we had to use uh, a new private key and secure all their smart contracts with the key to prevent the tampering uh so uh, i mean next uh, i mean the current steps that anchor could take um, for for ensuring that you know all the users are uh, you know uh, none of the users are harmed in the long run and uh, there is still some trust in their protocol because even though the staking protocol did make some mistakes uh, anchor protocol also offers a myriad of different services which people will still keep on using regardless of the hack so they had to instill confidence in people so that they don't stop using the uh, they don't stop using anchors different other other different services so uh, firstly i mean uh, they should ensure uh, that all the liquidity providers to different pools on different protocols are identified about uh, you know um, you know, i mean the people who provided liquidity to pools in which these tokens were traded they are identified uh, they are uh, you know just uh, notified about the hack and uh, they are notified about what actually happened and how anchor can compensate them so uh, then obviously they will have to uh, purchase 5 million dollars of bnb which was the amount that the hacker ran away with and they would have to uh, fill in the damage created to different liquidity pools um, but in this case there were two types of people 
one were the liquidity providers that were caught off guard right and the other type of people were uh, they knew that the hack happened they were also liquidity providers but then they made use of uh, this information that uh, abnb's price had dipped by almost 100% and uh, by making use of this information um, they actually uh, were able to dump the token and make profits so um, it will be interesting to see how anchor can identify probably by taking snapshots of the before and after of uh, funds of wallets so um, yeah and then um, this is in their scheme of things to launch new anchor bnb tokens and uh, airdrop to affected uh, abnb c and abnb uh, b users uh, by as i mentioned uh, taking snapshots of users who were affected uh, before and after the exploit actually happened yeah so um, the snapshot uh, okay so yeah as a user the primary task uh, should be that you should stop buying abnb c uh, tokens at any point from any pool and uh, just wait for the anchor bnb airdrop uh, and uh, just uh, redeem it against the stake yeah so uh, that was it uh, thank you very interesting uh, sanket indeed it's very important to sort of be uh, as an end user uh, it's very all the more important to know about these hacks uh, so one of the things that uh, we also do uh, you know uh, uh, in this context is that uh, we publish a well researched well uh, studied uh, newsletter uh, th that is uh, you know that is curated for the benefit of not only uh, people who are technologically uh, you know uh, informed about uh, the audits and uh, programming languages and everything but also to people who are uh, in the world of investing who are interested in engaging with projects and uh, things like that so i think uh, from that uh, standpoint uh, following our newsletter is very important because uh, that is absolutely great wealth of information that you are getting at your fingertips uh, every week and uh, a very highly curated uh, valuable information uh, shane has a question for us uh, do you guys have any involvement with proof of reserves audit if any what are the key risks and takeaways from the project yeah so um, at the moment uh, we don't do um, proof of uh, reserve audits uh, because primarily it deals with uh, issuing a merkle hash certificate by uh, checking uh, i mean uh, you know it's just not something that at the moment uh, we are involved with we uh, i mean there are a lot of different organizations that are into this in fact um, i think um, someone from our team has shared the reference for web3 suggests so uh, to ensure that you know you invest into protocols and exchanges that do have a merkle certificate or a proof of reserve um, proof of reserve we have created a list of exchanges that do have um, that do have a proof of reserve or a merkle certificate to ensure that you only invest i mean you know the ftx you don't lose money in uh, disasters like the ftx so um, that is there in web3 suggest uh, yeah but at the moment to answer your question uh, we don't uh, do proof of reserve uh, audits okay Uh, Kartikai, uh, do, uh, do, uh, do, do you mind if I ask a question? I think uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask, uh, are there any security best practices uh, or guidelines uh, that organizations should follow when, uh, we, we are, uh, when they are using or probably consider, uh, they are considering the using of uh, Hyperledger? Mm, yeah, so there are almost uh, same kind of guidelines what we do for uh, public blockchain as well here specifically what is very much important is how well we keep our private key public key secure in uh, some wallet like hashicorp wallet or something and then the architecture point of view you have to build the whole architecture by yourself like uh, we do it on kubernetes mostly so Kubernetes pod should be well, well secured. And the other aspect, it, it, it relies again on which cloud you are using, let's say Azure or something. 
then you have to understand more details about the security of the cloud and how well protected you are on your cloud by firewalls and some other kind of security aspects when it comes to blockchain stuff it's about the private key public key how it is secured and rest all is almost same how we do it for other applications which are on kubernetes or on cloud securities okay. i can take few more questions uh, are there any third party security audits or certifications uh, for hyperledger projects do you uh, no. do you have any recognized uh, hyperledger basically officially they don't give anything but i i i still recommend that uh, one should definitely go through cloud architecture and cloud certification cyber securities and that will be very very much important then about the devops if they have some devops security certification done uh, for docker kubernetes those things will be very very much helpful uh, but how does uh, hyperledger also ensure the integrity of the data like on the network for example uh, to pre prevent uh, tampering or manipulating of the records uh, is there any in uh, you know built uh, you know uh, processes that uh, protects the integrity of the data itself so for integrity purpose we we depend on the consensus how this consensus is actually working and we also provide the explorer uh, what sanket was showing us as also an explorer where you can identify verify several other things so the explorer for hyperledger is also same where it it helps you to investigate any run transaction which have happened and uh, it's a permission blockchain so uh, whenever we are enrolling one organization so it's a closed consortium you know so uh, the different different organization make one consortium to uh for this private blockchain and these organization have their own set of rules which they can write in some ml file those rules are very very critical to examine and those rules uh you, you can understand i'm just giving you a very generic and layman uh, example how hyperledger used to work uh when somebody is joining the consortium they have to uh, go through the rules which we have already written and those rules are very much critical to examine so those rules are written in uh this yaml files and the certification also we should do is for hyperledger foundation gives their own certification if you do the certification you will get to understand all uh details and understanding the best understanding you will get once you pass that examination uh for hyperledger about the yaml files how these are actually configured so config con configuring one organization is a very critical part cloud security is the second critical part and third is this thing uh, what we say private key and public key security rest you know smart contract is same how we do smart contract also exist in private blockchain uh, hyperledger allows you to have a smart contract in different different languages there are primarily three golang uh, then javascript and one is uh, java okay and smart contracts in this is mostly analyzed manually so there are no such tools which hyperledger is providing currently for the chain code here the smart contract is called as chain code to analyze the chain code we are still trying to develop such uh, tools where you can analyze your chain code so primarily there are four things i would say first is this uh, configuration file then the cloud security then this is smart contract and last is the devops infrastructure security awesome thank you for the answer yeah so um, okay so i mean i just wanted to ask since i don't have a lot of exposure with hyper ledger in in uh, public blockchains we use uh, cryptographic hashing to maintain the integrity so um, i mean is this is it the same case with hyper ledger since you did mention i mean the bit about the chain code so is that how it works with hyper ledger as well can can you please repeat the question i didn't follow 
and okay, okay. reading one of the comment okay okay that's okay no so i was just saying that uh, in public blockchains you have cryptographic hashing uh, yes. and that's how i mean you know sort of hmm. the smart contracts also do work hmm. um, on blockchain so um, since you did mention about the chain code in hyper ledger as well so do we also have cryptographic hashing to maintain integrity yes. in hyper ledger yes. yes it's it's same as it is low. so how we have a typical uh, blockchain uh, like previous hash is matching with the next hash and all so the blocks are created in such a way so that's how same thing happens here but little bit difference is we don't have continuous blocks flowing up whenever there is one transaction that will form one block so in okay. in public blockchain what happens there are like 30 20 or sometimes yeah. hundreds of transaction in one block so here yeah. what happens whenever there is one transaction that will create a block and meanwhile it will be silent and if there are two transaction at the time it will take two but uh, on an average there is only one transaction at one time in one block so this uh, and and also the cryptographic uh, uh, things is same it, it uses r256 to hash it and there's some encryption and same kind of block structure the only difference i can say the big major big difference you can visualize is the formation of block in public blockchain there is continuous block which is flowing up whenever transaction is coming is it's, it's just capturing bundling all the transaction but here in this in this case what happens is it just sits for even in uh, private ethereum yeah uh, in private ethereum also there is like blocks are like keep on generating yeah even when the data is not there hmm. even with even some transaction is not happening the blocks will be keep on generating but when it comes to uh, hyperledger the blocks will appear only when you do some some kind of transaction understood and will, thank yeah. you so if you have some more question from audience we'll take up and the last half an hour is only for uh, audience if they want to interact with us if we don't have we'll uh, wind yeah. up so shane ashok anybody um i probably have a question right so do you deal with any tokenization on uh, half ledger fabric and if that is the case and um how would you ensure that the tokenization is as secure as those implemented by the uh, standard of erc for example mm, yeah so with the latest release of hyperledger 2.0 uh they 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 have given us this flexibility to have our own erc721 erc20 or any such solidity evm based smart contract but it it really depends on the use case where you want to use the erc20 okay since it's a private blockchain for what purpose we will be using it, it your your token will have no value until you list it on some exchange i think that's that's the thing so uh still figuring out if if the use case is uh, demanding if if the use case requires such kind of token then we should use it otherwise i'm i'm still thinking for a best use case where uh, erc20 or such thing can be you know good fit for uh, hyperledger based uh, application or architecture did you get my point yeah uh, but in terms of the implementation right so for example is that the use case of um uh, tokenizing like for example like electricity so on okay. this and we want to create an nft of it so if you personally would you choose fabric or base for this purpose yeah i'll 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 choose see since ha huh, this, this, this is a good use case uh, let's say for tokenizing uh, electricity grid uh how much electricity you are using this for this purpose i will definitely use hyperledger fabric because it it it, it is uh, 
taking us to a private consortium okay so this electricity will be privately deal uh, we need not to put it on public blockchain and a besu based private blockchain i i i prefer hyperledger besu based private blockchain that will be more helpful than hyperledger fabric because hyperledger fabric comes with lot of uh, uh, configuration details and some different different other things and besu will get read of us and masses can adopt it very easily is, is there any security concern on tokenization on tokenizing uh like the, uh i know that we can deploy the erc contract in fabric right but um it does not work the same as the one that uh you deploy on the ethereum chain is my understanding correct See, security concerns for this one will be as same as how we do it in public blockchain maybe what sanket and uh, pradeep are discussing is about let's say if erc20 is deployed then what are the vulnerabilities are there in the smart contract same vulnerabilities will be here because of both the smart contracts are same so we in that case the security concerns will be only those controls which we look for a normal erc20 in uh, public blockchain all right thank you yeah. i mean mm -hmm. uh, do you guys have uh, any more questions we would love to take them up anyone else uh, kartike i have a question about uh, a generic question about um, uh, yes in, in the interest of uh, auditors who might be uh, who might be interested to take up a career in enterprise blockchains or permission blockchains uh, you said uh, uh, you know uh, there are uh, 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 internal Uh, processes that we uh, that you follow for hyperledger so if somebody wants to become an expert in enterprise blockchain or permission blockchain uh, what kind of uh, uh, you know uh, certifications are probably what kind of training would help uh, uh, does hyperledger conduct any uh, security related trainings uh, in specific in the interest of people who are interested in this field yeah 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 see when it comes to private blockchain it's just not not one technology so uh, yesterday i was reading about some funny uh, meme on linkedin itself like there was one hiring happening for blockchain expert and below that they have written there is nothing like blockchain expert there are different different blockchains available right now polygon ethereum many are there and when it comes to public private blockchain it's it's just combination of all those technologies we have gone through it it it, it has devops it has uh, it have Uh, Node.js, completely Node.js. The smart contract is also in Node.js. API is also in Node.js. Your 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 securities with cloud, how well you can secure firewalls, many other things. So you need to be expert of each of those things. You have to get one certificate for Kubernetes. You have to get one certificate for maybe in securities of Kubernetes, uh, or uh, maybe you have to get. definitely you should have a one certification for cloud security you should have one certification for uh, uh, hyperledger foundation from hyperledger foundation itself for hyperledger fabric so combining all those you can get this thing uh, is that answer clear you have to be yeah. expert of uh, cloud security you have to do one cloud security security let it be gcp mm -hmm. aws or azure or anything because right. you will be ultimately hosting it on that then some Uh, normal cyber security security is related to apis okay right. your apis are written in nodejs then your uh, infrastructure is based on kubernetes you have to be expertise on kubernetes as well then you have to get one certification for uh, hyperledger foundation itself uh, some anything like that right. 
so that will be so have, a bunch of those technologies will help sure sure so we have a question also from ashok uh, he is asking yes. i would like to know the demand for auditors as a career in the future so i would say ashok i think uh, uh, the technology itself is uh, evolving in a positive direction and there is a lot of uh, 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 you know there is a lot of hopes in on this technology to uh, to be uh, replacing the existing ones right so from that standpoint uh, you can uh, you can already witness the kind of innovations that are happening uh, in the nft space in the defi space uh, in the uh, you know enterprise blockchain uh, like hyperledger itself so uh, uh the 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 uh, uh, undeniable uh, you know fact uh, fact of uh, uh, you know any technology that is evolving is the security aspect of it which remains as one of the concerns which has remained in the past which will also remain in the future as one of the important aspects so uh, security guys will already have will always have a demand i would say and uh, you know because this is an evolving technology it is all the more important that security guys Uh, are in the forefront of any innovation and take part actively in any product development or so so from that context as well uh, the auditors uh, you know become a, a very integral part of any web3 project i hope uh, i i hope this answers your question ashok thanks <laughs>